Hello and welcome to the Monday, May 15th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Almost 10 years ago, Google was approved for the use of the generic top-level domain .sip as well as .mov. Google hasn't really used those two top-level domains since then, but started actually allowing registrations of these domain names about a month ago. Now, initially, there was sort of a limited release. You had to pay basically an extra early registration fee starting last week. Anybody for the standard fee of as low as $15 a year was able to register these domain names. Now, there still appears to be sort of some variation in the exact price of the domain name. Some uh, more popular, like based on English words and such, appear to be more expensive. But what happened was that basically now sort of this little bit of a gold rush started of uh, people registering domain names ending in .zip and .mov. The reason this is significant is that these are, of course, standard file extensions. So some of the domain names being registered are, for example, officeupdate.zip, update.zip, installer.zip, and similar domain names that really are reminiscent of file names. This, of course, could first of all lead to phishing attacks that confuse the user about whether or not they're actually opening a local file or a remote URL. The other risk here is that many tools like email readers and such may convert zip file names into URLs. And then when you're sort of hovering over that link to that external site now, well, you're actually doing a DNS lookup or maybe a user may by mistake, click on it, which then will leak the name of that zip file. Zip file names are usually nothing sort of super sensitive, but still something that you probably don't necessarily want to leak to the public. As of Sunday morning, we have about 6,500 uh, .zip domains and about 900 .move domains, and seems to be still somewhat accelerating the number of domains being registered here. My recommendation, block the .zip and .mov top-level domains in your DNS server, maybe a proxy if that's more convenient to you, but I don't really see at this point a good reason why you should allow lookups for .zip and .mov domains. And talking about privacy and not leaking information, Brave, the Chromium-based browser that's sort of focusing on privacy, is introducing a new privacy feature that goes beyond what's commonly being offered when it comes to privacy. Most privacy features focus on cross-site privacy issues, where one advertiser, for example, is able to detect different sites that you're visiting. The new feature, and uh, they're calling it forgetful browsing, focuses on same site privacy. So is a site able to detect that it's still you if you're coming back later to the same site? Now, this is often something that we want. We want to stay logged in to a particular website, but we don't always want this. We sometimes, for example, would like to use a website as different users without the website necessarily knowing that both of these connections are actually associated with the same user. So what forgetful browsing does after you close a tab and have no longer an active window open for a particular site, well, all data associated with the site is automatically being uh, deleted. This, of course, also means that you are logged out to the particular site. It's similar to a website that sort of has a very short kind of inactive uh, session uh, feature. Now, a website, of course, doesn't know if you still have a browser window open. At least usually they don't uh, know that. So they can't necessarily implement a feature like this on the server side. But the, by implementing it on the browser side, as long as you keep a window open, you'll still be logged in and the website will 
work as it's supposed to. If you close that particular window, then all the data, meaning cookies and local storage and all of that is going to be automatically deleted. A little bit dangerous feature here. It may break your experience, at least uh, with some sites. But uh, if you do want to basically prevent this sort of same site tracing, uh, then you definitely may want to play with this feature. It will be implemented in a desktop version of Brave in version 153. They're currently on version 151. And Intel, interestingly, on Friday did drop an update for microcode for a wide range of its uh, processors that supposedly fixes a security vulnerability, but there is no detail available as to what exact security vulnerability it fixes. While we have really no idea how important this update is, uh, you should receive uh, the update as part of an operating system update. There is nothing else really that you need to do at this point, just Apply your operating system updates and uh, with uh, Linux or Windows, one of those operating system updates will include the new microcode. Another miscellaneous updates, we do have some details regarding uh, five different vulnerabilities in the Netgear Nighthawk RAX 30. Firmware addressing these vulnerabilities was released early April, but we now have actually details regarding these vulnerabilities and how they can be chained in order to get full remote access to the router. And then also updates from Synology for their VPN Plus server. Relatively a vague description here, some kind of a SQL injection apparently, but uh, with that also it's uh, difficult to come up with a good CVSS uh, calculation for this particular vulnerability. Some call it critical, so definitely apply the update in particular, since this may be one that's a little bit difficult to protect yourself from. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.